Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're in the ham shack and we are going to tech out a brand new GMRS radio. We're gonna see some power output tests on the bench and then we're gonna see if we can contact a local repeater outside in the truck. Let's get right to it. It is a radio in a box like almost all radios are these days. They come in boxes, we get an owner's manual which is up to the usual quality that we expect from our friends over at Redivis. We get a warnings manual. That's pretty thick. I hope it's in multiple languages. Ah, oh, it is. Okay, so there's not a whole lot of warnings, but just enough to, to satisfy all the safety sallies. I pulled it out of the plastic bags already. Well, most of the plastic bags. This is your mounting hardware kit. We might wind up mounting this permanently in the truck or in the ham shack. I'm not 100% sure yet, but you get all the goodies in there. So some screws to screw into your workbench or your car, and then a microphone holder and a couple of spare fuses. And then we have a nice hand-sized microphone with the slide-on microphone holder in the back, and this is IP67 rated for you overlanders out there. And then we have the mobile bracket for mounting it in the car, and it looks like it allows for tilt to reduce eye fatigue for you. And then I also went ahead and put power poles on this so we can get right to work because I am a power pole aficionado. Let's get that out. Let's get the microphone out. The microphone is a five, one, two, three, four, five, six, six pin screw on type connector. So that was the world's second fastest unboxing. Let's get the microphone plugged in and screwed down tight. All right, that's not going anywhere. Turn on the power supply. Remove the SO239 booty from the back. Coax for the back of the radio. Coax for the back of the power meter. All right, let's turn her on. VHF, UHF. Interesting, does that mean it will do? Okay, and our power is set to low. Where did we see power settings? Signal, nope. Utilities, radio setting. Okay, so it just winds up being defaulted to that top button where it says LO. So low, high, medium. Let's take a look over at our power meter. We are on low power. We have 8.45 watts out on low power. On medium power is 14 and a quarter. And on high power is 27 and change. Perfect. All right, I found a repeater here. This is the WRJH615 repeater, and it is 462.675, and it is 9.9 9 miles away. Let's see if we can get that programmed in. For programming this radio, there is a access port on the back that you can unscrew, and then that gives you access to this little hatch here, which keeps everything fairly protected inside. And then this has a mini USB style connector inside of it that you plug right into there and the rest of it happens by magic through the computer. I'm sure you guys have all seen how to install Windows software before. This is my Windows radio programming laptop. We've got the RB86 software up and running, and I have my repeater data from repeater book, and I've got the USB cable plugged in to the RB86. Up here at the top is a button that says write to radio and a button that says read from radio. We're gonna click the read button and see what kind of magic that gives us. Connection time out. Please check COM port. Okay, so let's exit out of there and let's do setting, COM port select. Let's do COM3, read from radio, and we are reading. Succeed. Keep on sucking until you succeed. We're gonna go ahead and write this out because we can. And it says clone in, and we're writing channels. And the radio is rebooting and succeed on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start programming in. Channel numbers above 31, you can program in. So I put in 462.675, which is the received frequency. And I put in 462.675, which is not my transmit frequency. So I need to change that based on my offset to 467.675. So you can see that's the 467.675 with a five megahertz offset. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And then when I write this to the radio, it should show up in channel 31. So that's the programming software. It is a little finicky. I found out you have to program channels above 30. I had to write to the radio twice in order to get it to accept. Then I can't spin the dial through the channels. I have to enter the channel manually using the microphone. 
So it's a little bit weird. It's probably some buried setting in there, but the manual is pretty light and you just have to tinker with it a little bit. However, let me show you this neat little gem I found. Check this out. Two meter call on the display because I programmed that into the software as 146.52 with no tones or anything and on mid bandwidth. Let's look at the power meter to see if it actually works. 22 watts out on two meter call. So we have a two meter ham radio here as well as a GMRS radio. Interesting. As of the time of this recording, this radio is $126.99 on Amazon. That's pretty cheap for a 20 watt GMRS and ham radio combo. This is IP67 rated for water and dust. It also handles NOAA weather reception and it looks like it has NOAA weather alerts. Features at a glance, 11 NOAA weather channels, emergency alarming, five programmable function keys, IP67 waterproof, DTMF decoding and encoding, color display, two-tone and five-tone decoding and encoding for those of y'all that need it, CTCSS and DCS encoding and decoding for getting into them repeaters, remote kill, stun, and activate if you are trying to manage a fleet of these radios, and it does the 1750 hertz tone for opening up some repeaters. This is the regular Radiodity 2 meter and 70 centimeter antenna on the truck. And then inside we've got the WRJH615 GMRS repeater programmed in. It's about nine miles away. I'm on high power. Can we hit it? WRNY 996. I'm not seeing anything. But I really wouldn't hold that against anything at all at this point. I am in an area that I am not familiar with because I travel all the time. And that nine miles away could be nine miles away in somebody's attic, or it could be nine miles away on top of a 300 foot tower. And I will never know. It could also be a five watt repeater and it might not be making the trip back to me. I'm not sure. I did take a drive over to Walmart thinking I'd be able to make the contact a little bit better when I got closer into the city. Turns out the Walmart is 14 and a half miles away from the repeater and it also couldn't be opened from there. I think this is a great little value at $130 for a 20 watt, GMRS or ham radio. It looks like it is made by TYT and then white labeled, black labeled, black boxed, whatever, whatever that's called by Redivis to get it into your hands. The programming software was okay. It's equal to about just about every other programming software that's out there. If you're interested in getting this radio to toy with it, there will be a link in the description down below for you. And being able to open this up to the ham bands and having the audio out on the back and the screw in connector for the microphone on the front means you can do a lot of digital stuff with this thing too if you bring your own cables and build the right cable for the job. Mine came unlocked when I opened it out of the box. I'm not sure if they all come that way, but there's probably an unlock code there if you get one that is locked up. Either way, it is a pretty good value to have a GMRS radio and a ham radio that you can switch back and forth between and operate under all of the proper licensing and legalities that are required. We're gonna keep searching for more GMRS mobile radios and do some more reviews on those in the future. So if that's the kind of thing that you like, be sure that you are subscribed and take a look at this video right over here. YouTube thinks you might like that one also. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.